I've got another great person up now, and that is Dr. Tamitha Scove. We don't have her via videotape. We have her live. How are you, T? I'm hanging in there. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. It's, uh, it's nice to have you here live. So what's going on with the sun? Do we have any storms to watch out for? Absolutely. The sun's actually been pretty quiet as of late, but that's about to change. We've got this really dark finger that's been streaking across the, uh, the sun, and it's actually moved now into the Earth strike zone. We also have this region right here. I don't know if you can see it fizzling and parting and popping stuff off. We had a couple mini solar storms that almost made it off the sun, but not quite from this region. And then suddenly, as this region gets a little bit further, this, this big coronal hole finger, gets a, you see that big eruption right there. Wow. That went off just uh, not like not even 24 hours ago. So that and this big long finger is probably going to give us some really fast wind as well as some turbulent stuff hitting. It'll start hitting it right about now. As a matter of fact, I'll show you the AP index in just a second. You'll see a big rise in the activity level. And this is going to continue for a few days because this is driving some fast wind. And this elongated thing means it's going to probably take three or four days. So this activity might actually uh, give you guys some disturbances through the weekend. Uh, let me switch to your uh, solar flux. You can see there's not a lot of activity in terms of flares. So if I switch to the solar flux levels, you've got an M flare. Uh, the M flare level is really right about here, and we've got nothing even close to that. We're almost two orders of magnitude down. So we're really not seeing a lot of activity, just a little bump right there. That was from that eruption. Um, but we're going to continue to flatline there. So, you know, we're not getting a lot of solar flux. The, uh, the bands are probably minimal propagation at best, uh, and it's going to continue to stay that way for the indefinite period. Um, for as far as the KP index, you, this is a stoplight chart. Green is good, uh, yellow is eh, and then red is storm level. You can see we've been really quiet over the last couple of days. We finally are just beginning to pop up to what we consider unsettled conditions. This will continue here for the next, oh, maybe six hours or so. And then I wouldn't be surprised if you start jumping up into active conditions. So this is definitely going to affect the hand bands. You guys are probably going to have a bigger uh, trouble once you pass the gray line and into the night side because that's where the disturbance actually occur. Um, and then it will continue over the next few days, probably in through Friday, maybe even in through the weekend, depending upon whether or not we get something from that, um, that actual that solar storm that is missing us. Now, let me go, hold on a second while I pull up my five days. Okay, let me zoom in here. This is uh, the solar storm, and hopefully you guys can read this. This is solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. We got it through Thursday through Monday. At high latitudes, uh, NOAA is predicting that we will have at least minor storm conditions. Whoops, I should have made that orange. Minor storm conditions with a about a 50% chance possibility of a major storm hitting, which would taper off into about a 30% chance of a minor storm uh, into through the weekend and then tapering off even further after that. At mid-latitudes, definitely expect active conditions. We do have about a 20% possibility of a minor storm, and then that will taper off to an active uh, and the conditions through the weekend and uh, possibly quiet by Monday. But your weekend is looking a little bit dicey here uh, because we already have minimal conditions as it is. You know, the, the solar flux is so low. So this is just going to add insult to injury. Okay, we've got a we've got a chat room question. I know you're going you're to hang out to the end of the show for uh, for for chat room questions, but this is a good one. Uh, Chris, KG4GSX wants to know, hey, Dr. Scove, why are we having so many sunspotless days? Ah, the reason for that is that the reason for that is that we are actually getting down to the solar minimum. Uh, we're not there yet. We're probably going to take another couple years or so. But we've we've passed through solar max. And as we come down through solar minimum, as a matter of fact, let me go back to this picture. This will help as we go back to solar minimum, hold on, I've got to figure out where my mouse is, um, what we see a lot less of are active regions like these, these bright spots, so we get a lot less flare activity, which is good from the point of view of it means that you don't have any, um, you don't have M-class flares with radio blackouts, but bad because it means you don't have as much solar flux for decent propagation. What you do see, though, is still solar storms because we still have these fingers of coronal holes that drive fast wind. So we still do get solar storms. A lot of times they're not as bad but we do get that. Once we get to solar minimum, these coronal holes, you'll never see them down here in the equator. You'll see them up at the poles, at the North Pole and at the South Pole. And then we're going to have no sunspots, probably no storms, maybe even for as long as a year. But that's not necessarily great because that also means the solar flux is low. So it's still going to be problematic for the handbands. 